Hello, welcome to my garage. Today we're going to start on our new project. It's an electric motorcycle. I bought it broken, of course. I had to pick it up with a trailer. So I did and now I have it right here in my garage. The problem is it doesn't work. Uh, when you turn on the ignition, then every time different things happen. The dashboard lights up or it doesn't. The charger does not work. Sometimes things light up, sometimes they don't. So first thing I want to do with this is to get the panels off and check the connectors if they're very corroded or something or loose connections or something like that. I have measured the voltage in the main battery. That's about 60 volts. But uh, the previous owner told me that it wouldn't charge anymore and it's been, it ran about half a year ago for the last time. Maybe a little bit more uh, ago. If you like this kind of project, don't forget to subscribe and let's get started! It's hard to get this one apart. There are a lot of screws and plastic parts that are quite fragile and hard to reach. But online I could find enough information to find the hidden screws. and So I got it all apart without breaking anything. Uh, the front I didn't find any suspicious things so I went to the battery and this is what I found pretty corroded connectors not all it had about 60 volts and when I turn on the ignition it immediately drops and measuring some cells will give will learn me that this one has about one volt, one point one, zero point zero nine. Now I have part of the pack from the Volvo project. The Vectrex runs at a maximum of about 150 volts, so I take five of these batteries. So I hook up a jumper cable here and here, and I will connect that direct to the motor controller. Uh, so I have power without the original battery, and then we'll see what happens. Now I have uh, about 150 volt on the starter cables. This one has no precharge relay, so we have to precharge it manually. We will precharge it with the light bulb. I just don't know if this one is a 220 volt light bulb or if it's going to glow. We'll see. Yeah. I don't know if you could see it, but it... So, now we have 150 volt stable on the system. Let's see what happens. Now it's looking a lot better than with the other battery. And then now a battery problem. 
Bad hot. It says, and I think I know why. But the system looks now stable, so let's connect the computer and see what the computer tells us about this one. Well, with 150 volts on it, it runs. I can even get the software to work. But the main issue I have is the bad hot report. So I have to figure out if I can do something without that, uh, to get that out, that error. It's the temperature sensors. I can see it is uh, especially sensor 3, 4D that's giving 60 degrees centigrade. That's about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So there is something wrong with the temperature sensors. The other ones give uh, extreme low reading. The ambient temperature is about 13 degrees centigrade or 11.7 depending on which sensor you look at. And it's in the garage here a little bit warmer, but that should not be a problem. So let's find out if we can get to do something about that temperature readings. Now I have removed the batteries. It was quite a job and there are all kinds of liquids inside. I think there are some batteries leaking and this is the worst of the temperature sensors. They're all corroded. There were a few that were looking bad. This is, this is the worst one and there was one not functioning. So I'm going to clean it up and see if the sensor gets a reading. Well, cleaning up the boards made it uh, look like normal temperatures. So the irregular temperatures were caused due to corrosion on the temperature sensor boards. I have cleaned them up, they will work now I think, but it's not a long term solution, but that does not matter because I am going to change the battery anyway. So let's put the battery back together and see what the charger does. Now after cleaning the temperature sensor board, I tried to mount it again and it's so far gone, it's snapped off. So it's basically a temperature sensor, no more, no less. So I'll put in another temperature sensor and see what the This one is like the same specs as the temperature sensors on the boards. Yeah, when I keep the sensor to the wires it goes to 20 degrees. So let's take out the wiring loom and put these temperature feelers in between instead of the sensor boards. Now the temperature sensors are connected. And they're all and I turn on contact. They're all working. This one I haven't changed yet, but I will change them because there are a few not working. And now we see no bad hot anymore. Let's see if we can get it going. Left brake, right brake, it says go. And when I turn the throttle, it 
It's working! Now let's get the other ones uh, finished. So maybe we can even make a test drive. Who knows? Now I'm topping off the batteries. Hoping that they're all about uh, the same uh, in the same state of charge. Now let's put the first battery back and hopefully when I need it the last one of the front battery pack is uh, charged. Uh, let's get to it! During the removal of the headlight the bulb broke. Quite fault but uh, not a big problem. When I picked up the motorcycle, the front brake had no brake pressure, but after a few times turning on the ignition, uh, it cycled and from the mo one moment to another I had brake pressure and the brakes worked perfect. You know it's serious when the gloves come on. First time on its own power. Something happening. I also fixed the light bulb. And it says go. I can hear it. It's making some funny noises, but it's it's working. Let's connect the computer and see what it. No, let's turn it off and connect the charger. See what the charger does. Uh, uh, the charger goes in. No funny noises. It looks like it's charging. It's completely working! That's great! The only thing is I had to charge the batteries already, but it's still not completely full, so I don't think these batteries are very good anymore, but for now it's fine. Let's close it all up and uh, put everything back where it's supposed to go, and then We'll take it from there, let's see if we can make a drive.
Well, let's go for the first pit. Let's see how far we get and uh, if we can make it back. Well, that was kind of interesting. It was a, a fun drive, but the range should be about 50 kilometers according to the dashboard. But after about 10 kilometers, the light of the battery went on. And there were all, uh, just a few bars gone. It was not even halfway, but uh, I lost already a lot of power. I made it home with about uh, 30 kilometers an hour. The total trip was about 18 kilometers on a full battery. So that's not not very good. Yeah, it's, it was about 18 kilometers. But it's fun to drive. And I'm definitely going to change the battery and probably will make some more upgrades of this nice Vectrex. Uh, if you like this kind of videos, don't forget to subscribe and who knows what kind of batteries will I choose? See you on the next one!